You're smiling. Glorious leader, how's your day going? Um, nicely, I'd say. Good to hear that. I say that about my day as well. Uh, you didn't come here for small talk. What's up? I just wanted to know how you were holding up. Being the leader and having all these new people in our family. She smiles generally, or gently. I can only imagine how hard it must be to have such a responsibility on your shoulders. Your backpack must be quite heavier than ours when we talk, uh, when we walk on the mantle. Uh, it's really hard. I make every decision, so if something happens, I'm the one to take the blame. You know that you can always come to me, right? I'm not saying you need my help, but that I can give it, I can give it to you. Even just listening can be helpful in such cases. Uh, thank you, Dimitri. I appreciate that. Yo. Thanks. Oh, where are we in the map? Oh, yeah, we're, we're definitely in the far corner. Find an old farm? Four hours. Cool. 17 damage from climbing. Nice. Well, I probably can't keep doing that because we're running out of medical supplies. Oh, there seems to be a lot of stuff down there. Oh, you found a gas station. Four hours. Grabbling hook. While exploring, you hear a noisy beast. You quickly turn and spot a link ambushing your group. Yeah, just like with the guns, we just take absolutely no damage at all from using it. Ah, What is it with these strange dreams, dude? Strange dreams again. This time you're in a dark room with only a couple of flashlights that give you just enough light to see something, uh, see your surroundings. Come on, give me some light over here. It's not easy to fix this stuff in the dark, and you can keep moving the flashlight away. How's it going? Can you finish before dinner? Uh, don't worry, we're almost done. Yeah, that should fix the power leak, and light will shine upon us again. I hope so. I'm so tired of bumping into all my furniture. Division uh, starts blurring and you wake up. You had another one of those strange dreams, and vivid dreams, and you start wondering if you will ever find an explanation for them. Same. Uh, you're in a relatively open area of the forest where it is easy to walk around. Another bear? Uh, sure, let's go. Ahead. Damn everyone, why are you taking so much damage, guys? You guys need to get good. Although apparently Fang was the only one that took damage, that's okay. He's tough, he can handle it. You found a small town. Uh, decreased risk. While scavenging the village for anything useful, you find a little police station. It appears to be completely, uh, shuttered and abandoned. While exploring, you hear some growling. It's a wolf, scared by your presence. Yo, so we found a knife, electrical parts, a lighter, and some furs. Yeah, let's take everything. You found an old farm. Uh, you loot what you can find in the building while you see that the floor ahead of you is highly unstable and uh, is dangerous to proceed. Uh, try to carefully proceed across the floor. Use a rope to create a safer passage. Sure, we'll use a rope. You're scavenging the place when you hear a strange noise, and a crazy man jumps out of nowhere, screaming and wielding a gun. Huh. Well, we killed a man today. I hope you guys feel proud of yourselves. Another rope. Uh, just run from the danger. Huddle in the corner. Wow, you guys are really bad at saving yourselves. Apparently, I'm going to need to work on my medicine skill a lot in this game. From what it seems. Because everyone is just taking damage. And I mean everyone. An argument wakes you up. It seems that Carlos and Mojabala are fighting about something. You get out of your tent in a hurry. Don't you try to deny it. I know it was you that stole it. Are you crazy? I didn't steal anything. But you've hated me since we met, so I'm not exactly surprised. Both of them seem to be very angry. I don't believe you. The only thing that we know about you is some people claim that uh, you were a bandit. 
What, they killed my family. They were searching for slaves to sell. The two seem to be ready to stop talking and start punching. This is probably the last chance. Uh, do you want to try to stop them? Stop them. What are you doing? He's a dirty thief. He deserves no defense. I stole nothing. You have no proof to support your gibberish. I don't care what happens. Stop this nonsense right now. I had this wonderful book among my things, and guess what? It's disappeared. Just a few days after he joined us, too. That proves nothing. If you are so sure that I took it, just look through my things. You won't find anything. Uh, is it true that you have no proof? Proof. A book of mine disappeared right after he showed up. That's solid proof. Come on, search through my things and prove it yourself. Wrong. Carlos spends a couple of minutes searching among uh, Mobile Jack's a few belongings, but he seems to be unable to find the book. Where did you hide it? Give me back my book, you thief. Calm down. Maybe you just lost it on the road. I would never lose it. It's an important memento of mine. Someone stole it. I won't tolerate the presence of a thief in our family. We'll solve this right now. Otherwise, this, there will be consequences. Well, maybe he's just lost it. We found nothing in Mobilock's stuff. Uh, how could he lose something that he takes uh, care of? Uh, we'll search for it in each tent. I'm sure we'll find it. Things don't magically disappear. You see Eva standing up, barely able to hold her tears. I... I took it. She starts crying. I didn't mean to steal it. I just wanted to take a look at it. I was about to put it back when... Uh, but then Carlos started screaming. I didn't know what to do. She opens her uh, coat and hands a small book back to Carlos. Oh, sweetheart. You should have just asked for it. See? I did nothing. Remember this day the next time you are about to accuse me. Mobledak turns around and walks towards his stuff and starts packing up. Carlos uh, grimaces uh, Mobledak's words and then turns his attention to Eve. That book is precious to us. Didn't anyone teach you not to steal? Come on, honey. Everything is fine. We found it. Let's get uh, go prepare our stuff. Uh, April and Carlos walk away while Eve's wiping her face and puts her backpack on. Oh, I didn't see that other part. But whatever. Can I please go to my destination now? That'd be great. Oh, wait, there's people here? There's only one place we can go to, but YOLO. You're led into a big room, warm and full of people. It appears to be the only place uh, open to strangers. Huh, so we discovered a new location. Uh, Go talk to the guards in front of the door leading inside the complex. You approach the guards defending the entrance to the intersections of the building. As soon as they see you coming, they raise their weapons. You are not allowed to enter, Outsider. If you need to contact someone inside our compound, uh, you will talk to me. Uh, how can we get inside? You can't. Outsider, access is strictly forbidden. You can only enter if someone from the inside allows you. And even in that case, uh, it needs common approval. I'll be going now. Uh, go to the training post. The training post is nothing more than some stalls and uh, crates. A young woman seems to be the only one working here. Hello, how can I help you? We can offer you pretty much everything that you need during uh, your travels. Uh, can I ask you some questions? Well, I'd really like to have a conversation, but I'm new here and I don't want the guards to see me chatting with people. If you have questions, ask Matteo. Uh, he's the hunter in the booth right there. Trade. Uh, so I'm assuming, yeah, these are the things I have, I, th I think, maybe? No, these are the things I have, alright, I'm stupid. Uh, nuts. So we have a lot of shovels I can probably sell. I mean, I don't see a reason for having so many shovels. Actually, I should probably keep one torch. Wait, what about the rest of our stuff? I know we have more stuff than that, but why can't we access it? Oh, there we go. Alright, yeah, I'm, st I'm stupid. Smoke grenade. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of the smoke grenade. Uh, let's get rid of pretty much all this junk. This junk seems kind of useless to us. Oh, what does she have for her first aid kits? 
Um, deal. Alright, so we have a lot more supplies. Oh, we can get a mechanical bear trap. Uh, we can get some heavy clothes. A pistol, although I'm liking my silence pistol. Uh, my silence pistol seems to be working quite a bit. Oh wow, she has um she has a revolver which does two damage. Uh, she has military clothes. Uh, what's the durability in my clothes? Actually, wait. Uh, she has the same thing back here. Uh, one point one in defense. Oh, all of her stuff is expensive though. One ninety for that. Uh, nah. I can get a sharp machete from her. I could get an MP5. Um, I can get an, a good quality bow. I'm almost thinking for going with this combination here, because I really need some more items. Uh, I guess I'll sell her some of the poopy knives that I have, and some of the grenades that I have. Alright, it's a done deal. Alright, garden. Um, sure, let's check the tavern. The tavern is just a little uh, counter with some chairs and tables scattered around it. There's no one inside except for the bartender. Greetings, traveler. How can I help you? Would you like something to drink? Or, or maybe you'd like to taste our famous produce. Or products. Ask some questions. Sure, I usually spend my day here doing absolutely nothing. I can assure you it's quite boring. Uh, what can you tell me about your leader? Serena, a damned bitch. The kind of bitch able to keep everyone together at a full efficiency. She knows what she's doing and is a born leader. She can be a real pain, but we owe her so much. Uh, ask about himself. I'm in T Antonio? Antonoli? I don't know. And I take care of this tavern. I know there's no one here right now. But we need to keep this place running for people like you. I can't complain. Yes, it's boring, but at least I have something uh, to do. And travelers have a lot of interesting tales to tell me. Uh, ask about the garden. The garden is our home. We are lucky people. Bec uh, we are lucky people because we can grow the food we need. Maybe one day we'll restore this place to its full capabilities and accept more people into our community. Uh, change the subject. Uh, we can leave. He doesn't have anything. What's approach to loner? Oh, his face. Gross. An old man reading a worn book is sitting inside the small booth. When he sees you coming, he raises his eyes and asks, How may I help you? Uh, what can you tell me of this place? The garden? The only place in the world where people are still able to grow their own food. We are really lucky. We sell a lot of food to strangers like you. In exchange, we get what we need to keep this place running. Uh, ask about himself. I was a hunter, but I had a bad accident some years ago and I've never recovered. Not fully, at least. I can't even walk properly now. So I stay here, help out the strangers, and uh, manage the other hunters. At least people can draw on my experience. Hunting is not easy around here, and we can't really uh, rely on what we grow inside the garden. Uh, you can't have too much food. None of the white wasteland. Yeah, let's approach the hunters. Oh, these guys look pretty cool. These are, mad these are what I imagined the companions would look like in Skyrim, but... Yo, these guys look much better. You walk towards the hunters. They're talking about some missing companions and a uh, hunt gone wrong that happened a few days ago. Suddenly, a middle-aged man turns to you and speaks in a soft or a, scorn tone, a scornful vo tone. Do you need something, or do you like to listen in on other people's conversations? I'm sorry, I overheard your conversation, but I think I can actually help you find your missing friends. A woman speaks up. We lost them three days ago. There's nothing much to be done. They're probably dead. The middle-aged man punches the table. We can't be sure about that. The two start arguing while a third hunter tries to talk you or talk to you. Stranger, we lost our companions in the woods north of here. If you happen to find their belongings or even their living bodies, we really appreciate it. The hunters keep arguing, keep arguing amongst themselves. Wow, I can't even speak now. Uh, as you can hear, they keep repeating the same things, just with different words, never reaching a, a resolution. Uh, I'll leave the garden. Yeah. So this is the area we needed to go. That's the area to do the side quest. So we're probably going to do the side quest first, since side quests are pretty fun. 
At least I enjoy side quests. And it gives us a chance to get some great loot. A strange, uh... I hear scratching. It's probably my cat taking a poopy. I uh, appear before your eyes on a tree stuck amongst the branches. There are two fresh survivor bodies, deadly impaled. Uh, they were carrying some stuff and they probably fell from a nearby cliff. Jump on a tree and try to take all their bags. Uh, take only the bags you can reach. Joe, I don't even care that I got four points of damage. Food is food, dog. Quietly you edge close to what seems to be in an inhabited cave. A man is sitting by the fire, cooking something over the flames. The cave entrance has all sorts of junk scattered about. Uh, only approach the guard and talk to him. You walk towards the guard. He's surprised to see you at the first, but then he starts smiling and greets you. Welcome, pals. How may I help you? Uh, who are you? Me? I'm a hunter, and that's my house. You can call me Lester. If you and y'all need my name. Uh, what are you doing out here? I survive. I hunt food, cook food, eat food. Me and my mates moved here a couple of years ago because these woods are full of prey. Oh, I think I remember this quest. This is the cannibalism quest. Alright. Uh, do you see any uh, many travelers around here? Yeah, buddy. A lot of travelers pass through these woods and I'm always happy when folks visit me. You suddenly notice something really sinister. The meat the man is cooking over his campfire is a human forearm. As soon as the man notices that you looked at this campfire, he starts running towards the cave entrance. Act fast, or you will soon lose sight of him. Uh, use the bow and shoot the cannibal. Taking a shot isn't easy, but you manage to draw an arrow and aim and shoot the target. In one smooth motion, the cannibal drops dead from your masterful shot. The cannibal is lying dead on the ground. If you are lucky, no one inside the cave heard any of the commotion. The cannibal is dead. His body half covered in snow. Your actions don't seem to have alerted anyone inside the cave. Maybe you will have the advantage of surprise. Now what? Going inside can be risky. If they have prisoners, we can't just let them die like animals. We should at least check the cave. You're right, dear. I guess that taking a look won't be so dangerous. They aren't expecting us, so let's come up with the best course of action to kill this cannibal scum without stupid risk. Sweetheart, why do you want to kill them so badly? They can be dangerous, and we shouldn't risk our lives. April, we are speaking of cannibals. They are more than scum. They are worse than bandits. They eat people. The less cannibals around, the better I feel. Examine the cave entrance. The cave is dark as narrow. Uh, it would be really difficult to advance without a proper source of light. Examine the exterior. There are a lot of things uh, scattered around. It's mostly useless junk, but you find a couple of torches among the guards' belongings. The body uh, has pretty much nothing on it, but you do find three bullets in one of his pockets. A tight passage in complete darkness leading to a den of cannibals, and here I thought I wasn't going to be able to have a fun on this trip. Uh, explore alone. Go in without any light. Go in using a torch. Uh, Alright, so we're going to have to decide what to do in the next episode. Because we are going slightly over time. So like always, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please feel free to leave a like. Uh, comment, tell me what your favorite part is. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe so you can get uh, daily updates on my videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Welcome back, guys, to part 6 of Icy, the Frozen Wasteland. On uh, the last episode, we pretty much just looted. And we talked to the guy about our, uh, the quest so we can get some monies. Why can I not hunt in this woods? Alright, that's kind of weird. They were not letting me hunt in that woods for some reason. Uh, the night comes. I uh, found a safe place. You found a safe place. Interesting. While traveling, you approach a group of well-equipped nomads. They greet you and tell you that they were traveling merchants specialized in weapons. They ask you if you want to take a look at their merchandise. Uh, attack them, refuse their offer. Sure, we'll trade with them. No need to be so salty towards everyone. Uh, we found a factory. Let's do medium. Uh, cool. Collapse part of the building. Grappling hook. The building is collapsing. Uh, collapsing. You have to get out as fast as you can. Of course I'm going to help my companions out. Ah, 17 damage? Damn. I uh, Maybe I should fix that, probably.
And we do have quite a bit of medical supplies, so I think we're fine. Uh, you were in a dark area of the forest where the vegetation blocks most of sunlight. Uh, sure, let's do six hours. You see a bear lurking around. Uh, yeah, let's shoot it. The bear wasn't alone. Another one lets out a ferocious roar and starts charging your group. Oh. Damn, they took even more damage. Alright, that's not a good thing. Well, Eva's health must be garbage, because she almost dies at, like, every attempt to, like, attack something. Oh, I bet you that bear gave us a lot of food, though. More boars. Huh, so it feels like the using the guns, we don't take as much damage. That's something I'm kind of noticing. Uh, with the guns, we can at least stop the boars quicker, but... Yeah, that's... I mean, that's at least just what I notice. Demetra approaches 